my crafty loving friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Let's get started with this Power Up collab. So I want to do these, uh, kind of a dupe of these grain scoops. So one sits and the other one hangs. So I'm going to use this scrap piece of pine that I have. It's one inch thick. And I've got this old tomato can. It was $2.99 for 16 pounds. This is an old, old can, and it's huge. Look how big that is. Gone are those prices. So I'm just going to use the bottom of that with uh, a pen, pencil, and I'm going to just trace around it to get a nice circle that I can cut out. Now I'm going to use my jigsaw, and I'm going to cut out these two circles all the way around, and then I'm going to cut a flat surface uh, on the front of each of them because I don't want a full circle. I kind of want a maybe a two-thirds circle. So I'm just taking this scrap piece of wood and I'm cutting off the the front I'm trying to eyeball where I want it. I didn't like that first line. So I uh, just put them together trying to find the bad spot so I could cut that off. And there we go just making a line there. There's no measurements here, I'm just eyeballing it. So I'm cutting those off, so see how there's a flat front on those to start my grain scoops. So I'm just sanding them down, sanding down the edges and the tops, just because I'm going to be staining and I want to make sure it will take the stain well and it's nice and smooth. I got these two aluminum pans from Dollar Tree for $1.25. They come together. And I'm carefully cutting out the raised uh, edge around the edges of it. And I'm taking a piece of tile that I have been working on and I'm just rubbing it across the top of that and getting some of those bumps out. I didn't want it so bumpy. wanted it more smooth. And also, it's making it curved, which is what I need for my scoops. So it's a win-win both ways. You get rid of your, some of your bumps, and it curves. So now I'm just measuring out how this um, is going to go on to the piece of wood. And I just checked it to see, and I didn't want to trim around the side edges, but the bottom I wanted to get it nice and straight so that it would fit and sit nicely on that piece of wood. So the edges I took and um, folded them over so that you wouldn't get cut on them because they are a little bit sharp. Be careful cutting that out too when you do because it is a little bit sharp and you can get cut. So there. So I'm just just making sure it's all going to fit nicely and then I want to cut here I'm showing you I want to cut a kind of a, a rounded edge on the top of that to make it more scoop like. Now I cut this several times and when I folded it over I did not crease the middle as you can see I just gently folded it over because I didn't want that creased fully. So I just hold them together like that and I did it several times. I didn't show you every time. I'm just trying to get the right look and even still, it's a little bit too tall for me. I want it a little bit smaller. I kind of like the shape, but eventually I get it. So I cut these two little dowels as well, uh, and one is going to go on the bottom for a handle on the one that hangs, on the scoop that hangs, and the other one is going to go on the top for the scoop that sits. So I'm taking my drill with a large drill bit that's a little bit bigger than the screw that I'm going to use to put in this piece of wood. So I'm just showing you here. I'm going to go down through the top on this one for the bottom handle. And I'm making a little bit bigger so my screw will go down inside and sit in that hole where the, uh, the screw is going to go through and then I'm doing a little smaller screw to put a smaller hole that the screw will go down into. I want that head of that screw because it's so much bigger to go right down inside that piece of wood 
and not sit on top. It's a good trick to use when you don't you only have a short screw and it needs to go down into something a little bit thicker. It just makes it go down in there a little better. So I added a little bit of wood glue and then put my screw in there and going to set it aside and let it sit and harden up. So this one I'm doing on the front instead of near the middle and it's going to go on the top and I did the same thing used a big uh, drill bit to put that screw so that it would go down in to the hole a little bit. Now I didn't go all the way through with that big drill bit you only go down just a little bit for that screw head to sit down inside. I hope I explained that correctly. So once they're in there, nice and not, it's not quite uh, glued up, but I just took some of my mixture of antique wax and black paint watered down and I just stained those wood pieces. And now I'm painting the aluminum now this really would work better if I had done it once it was hooked to the wood. The second one that I did, I did hook it and then paint it. Trying to do it this way with it, round it over, just did not work uh, very well and it kept rolling back on me and just making me all full of paint, which I usually am anyways. I get very messy. So now I'm gluing the aluminum to the wood piece around the bottom and the edge and you could also use little nails as well which I had on hand in case the glue didn't work but the glue actually worked well but for aesthetic if you wanted to do that to, to have it look more authentic you could put little nails in there to hold that in. Now I'm taking a extra piece of the aluminum that I had and I'm trying to make a cross piece that's going to connect between the two sides and that dowel in the middle. I'm going to glue those together. So this is the Power Up Collab put on by Sarah at Ken Sarah DIY and Tiff at Broke Girl Aesthetic. I'm going to have their links and the link to the playlist below for you guys to check out. And if you do, make sure you play by the rules and you could win a gift card. Watch all the videos on the playlist and watch for the secret word or listen for the secret word to pop up and comment down in each video the, the word that that video has come up with. Sarah will do a random drawing and if she chooses your name you could win a gift card from this Power Up collab. So make sure you check out the playlist below. My word is going to be orbital sander. So make sure you comment that down in the comments below. So once I have that glued on there and secured, I'm painting it the rest the same color as the rest of it as also along the back side of the aluminum, the same color. Even though I'm going to cover the that middle piece that I put on, I still don't want the shininess to show through in case it does. So here is the other one, the one that hangs on the wall, doing the same thing, gluing it around the piece of wood and making sure that it all fits and looks nice. And as you can see, I've cut that down so it's much shorter and more manageable and I think it looks better. Now this one I painted uh, while it was on the wood instead of rolling around not attached to anything and it seemed to work a lot better. The part that I didn't like was that I also used my antique wax on it and it just, I don't know, it still, it was hard to wipe the antique wax back off. But I made it work. So now I'm taking, like I said, even though I uh, painted that, I just didn't want to see the shiny. So I'm just taking my jute rope, the thicker of the jute, and I'm wrapping it around that middle piece to make it look more kind of country rustic. And I think that piece that I put across there is pretty ugly, and I just wanted to cover that up 
as well. I think this makes it look a lot better and also sturdier. There, so now that I got that all on there, now I'm taking my antique wax and black paint and water mixture that I mix up and I'm just brushing it lightly. Well, in some places thicker, I want this to look old and antiqued and like it's been around and used and abused. So, and that it does, I think. So I'm wiping it back off and now I'm also using it on the one that hangs. And this one is just a little bit harder because it's rounded. It's much harder to get inside there and get that wax pulled off. But luckily I'm going with a more rustic primitive feel on these. So if it doesn't all come off, it's okay. Now in a second, you're gonna see that I drilled a hole in the top and I put a little washer there to make it a little more sturdy and so that it would hang. So now I'm taking some homespun material. This is the black and tan checked. And the other one, I'm gonna use the black or the burgundy and tan checked to put on that as well. Just putting it around the bottom and putting a little knot. Here we go with the burgundy and tan. And again, just giving it a little knot gluing it in place. See what you think. gosh guys these are so rustic and cute how do you like them do you think they came out all right let me know down in the comments and don't forget to comment that secret word and check out the rest of the playlist so you can find out what their words are and use those down in the comments thanks for watching have a great day